On today's episode of Path Monk Presents, I have a very special guest with me who's joining today. Please welcome Remy, who is the head of growth of strategic partnerships for uh, Betis. So Remy, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited to have you on our podcast, learn more about what you're doing in your company and ultimately hearing about your growth story overall. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks for having me and good morning, Maria. Yeah, good morning to you too. Thank you so much. So for all of our listeners out there, give us an insight. What did your company do overall? So at Vectis, what we do is we focus on auto-documentation of machine learning projects and their governance. So we have a lot of things coming up in terms of AI regulation all around the world. Uh, we have the EU AI Act in Europe. US are also regulating, uh, are coming on, on that topic. Uh, we have Canada, India, so many other countries are, are focusing on this. And, uh, and so regulation uh, in, like definitely triggers uh, a lot of need in terms of uh, documentation because it's it's the key for the communication with regulators. Uh, we've been working with uh, a lot of um, companies in the banking industry, and uh, and now we see that those use cases expanding to more and more uh, industries. So the solution is really about simplifying the way uh, data scientists document their work and uh, enabling uh, other teams such as. Uh, governance team, risk teams, and business teams to be part of the conversation. So we have a web app for that. Um, and yeah, that's uh, in a few words uh, what Victus is. Amazing. Thanks for giving me an insight and for uh, walking me through it. So now as for your clients, how would, you say they, how would you say they typically find you? What are your top client acquisition channels? Is it word of mouth? Is it referrals? Digital marketing? Is it inbound? Uh, give us some insight. So uh, the the, the key uh, the, the key channel for us uh, is uh, outbound, and I like to call it uh, smooth outbound, uh, meaning that there are two very big parts into this uh, our outbound strategy. Uh, the first one is building a community, uh, and the second part are events, and those events are very special, and the community is already also a little bit special. Uh, I'd be happy to, to tell you a bit more uh, about it. Yeah, elaborate. I would love to hear more. Please continue. So uh, over the past uh, year and a half to two years, we decided to invest a lot uh, on building a, a community of top, top leaders uh, in AI. Uh, we're talking about uh, director plus level uh, with um, uh, really a big focus on a senior uh, vice president uh, and chief data officer uh, from big companies. We're an enterprise business, right? Yes. So really what we, we focused on are, on my side was uh, four major points. One was building the right team for it, uh, because in order to build uh, the right uh, community, you need, uh, you need to, to have relevant people in your team. So all my team are actually, even though it's uh, marketing and business development, uh, those, those people are all data scientists, um, and that creates empathy. I feel like, uh, especially to target this kind of, of, uh, of level, uh, you need to have people who can, uh, who can relate. So really, that, that was the, the, big, uh, the big thing that uh, we invested on. Then the second part is having the right topic. Uh, we realized that uh, data science, AI in general, is the last function that entered the enterprise over the past 10 years. Maybe IT was the, the previous last one. Uh, and, uh, and so really what we realized with this is that some leaders feel a little bit lonely in a way. Uh, we've had leaders telling us that coming to our event, they were realizing that uh, they knew only one person before that had this exact same job. And all of a sudden they could connect with way more people that have the exact same problems, which is like, for instance, how do you explain data science or AI in general to your leadership? And, and the whole like process uh, that comes with it and the whole ROI expectations and so on. So, so we started to really focus on, the, on this niche topic, which is leadership in AI with like, what it means uh, in terms of also on recruitment and retention and so on. Then the, the third part is to have a, a really a, a, a no expectation uh, approach, like really trying to, to be casual as much as you can uh, being as empathic as you can and, and, and give without expecting really anything. Uh, and, and in general, when you, uh, it's a little bit, a, a karma based, uh, approach, right? You try to give as much as you can and 
if it's a good fit, if, if they're going to hear about you and they're going to know if they're going to be interested and they're going to come back to you. Uh, and, and this with this approach, you, you manage to get very high level people uh, engaged and excited about uh, the things you're doing and you get the opportunities, but you also don't bother anyone. Uh, everybody hates to get those super salesy emails all the time. And, uh, and, and we try to stay as far from that as possible and focus on relationships. And the last part that we, we do, uh, because building a community, you need unique quantity, right, in a way. And also we're in a niche, uh, like leadership in AI is, is, is fairly niche. So, so what we really focused on was uh, building automation, but very like what I call surgical targeting. The people we are targeting are very, very, very much in one little box, and um, and that's uh, that's I think the, the biggest strength of the community uh, because every time people come to our events, uh, they just look around and there is not a single person who who is not going to be relevant. Uh, it's going to be their peers, hundred percent, and uh, that's very hard to do. That's really hard to. Um, uh, adjust because sometimes we have some demand and we realize people are a little bit aside and we have to take some uh, some strong decisions there uh but the the end result is always like very very positive the feedback are, are amazing uh so we we keep going in that direction well, that's incredible thank you so much for walking me through you know the entire process and you know elaborating on you know all the way down to uh, to the micro detail that's incredible what you guys are doing in house especially with being able to uh, focus on a very niche market and to, to being able to add that human element to it. I feel like that's where a lot of uh, AI companies tend to struggle is being able to have the face-to-face -face with um, the human element of it. So that's really great that you guys are able to do that. So now I want to talk about the website. So in your own words, what would you say are the major strengths of the website? And then where are there opportunities for room for improvement as well? Yeah, I think the the biggest strength of our website at the moment is uh, is about the the credibility in a way. Uh, I think for for a company at our stage, uh, our website is is quite solid in terms of uh, content that we have available. Uh, you you can go on the community page that I just talked about, and you will see all the stats of like who is uh, who's coming, uh, what kind of companies are we talking to, uh, who is in the network. Um, and uh, and also the, the couple of things we 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 propose. So it's we use it mostly as a as a, a support tool almost, uh, and and not as much yet as uh, as a lead generation tool. Uh, meaning that we will talk to people and people then will go on the website and be like, oh, Vectis looks legit. Let's keep talking to them. Uh, that's uh, that, that's kind of a, the the way the the website have been used. And uh, the, the the biggest uh, weakness, I think, is, uh, is that so far we haven't been working too much on the inbound, uh, and uh, that's something that uh, will most likely change, uh, especially because over the past quarter, uh, the the whole uh, search for a solution for uh, compliance uh, with new AI AI solutions uh, AI regulation, sorry, uh, is uh, is coming. So there is a booming demand and booming like uh, search for for this. The I think of about the past three months, uh, search for um, uh, auto document documentation of, of models uh, like jumped by nine hundred percent. So so it's been uh, it's something that now we need to really uh, investigate and put in place. Um, yeah, definitely. But thanks for elaborating on that for us and going in, uh, into the weeds of it as well for. What the strengths are that's the one thing i do agree with you like the credibility that was the one thing i noticed um, first thing on the website when i was doing my research and looking into you guys absolutely so yes so now i want to talk about you as a leader so within your role and i understand you know there's a lot of things that you manage but how do you stay up to date within your industry where do you go to learn and grow without being so overwhelmed by all the information that there is out there I think that the best way is to talk to your audience, talk to your audience every single day. Uh, this, I think, uh, more important than any uh, marketing strategy or marketing tool or, or, or all those things. If you talk to your audience, you're going to understand uh, how they're thinking, what is now top priority, how are things changing? 
and uh, and that's the just the best way to uh, to stay up to date. Definitely, yeah. Thank, thanks for um, giving us uh, that advice as well. So we're coming close to the end of our interview today. Now I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Oof. Yes. yes, you got this. <laughs> what is the last book that you read? Um, it was called uh, After Steve, the the book about uh, uh, Apple after Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. right, I've I've heard of it. I it, it's actually one of the books that I ordered recently, so I'm excited to read it. It's <laughs> so, nice. Yeah. So now, you could do anything. There were no boundaries in technology. What would be the one thing that you would want to have fixed in your role today? Um, I don't know if I, that counts, but can we have longer days? Yeah, uh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like days. a fifty-hour yeah. day. Yeah, it's just there's so so many things that 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 we have and that I would love to do and uh, and just little little amount of time and uh, at some point we also need to prioritize and stay focused I feel like there's so much I would love to do yeah, absolutely no I, I agree with you on that I wish I, I want more hours of the day like 20 24 isn't enough <laughs> <laughs> so now what is the one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you could go back and restart your career is there anything that you would do differently Oof, uh, that one is a tough one. Let me think about it for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think I have, a, I have something here. Yes, all right. Maybe the, maybe the, the biggest uh, advice I would give myself is uh, trust the process. Uh, they are, uh, I, I've, been, uh, I've been through a bunch of uh, different industries. Uh, I, I wasn't even doing R&D in the past before switching to the business side. Uh, and uh, just trusting the fact that at the end, everything will uh, will make sense. Uh, I mean, working now um, in a in growth for uh, a deep tech company, my my technical background is actually very helpful, and uh, and that's uh, that's something that at some point I felt like maybe I was going a bit all over the place. Um, but uh, trusting that, no, that it will make sense at some point. And now it definitely does. Amazing. No, and I love how you emphasize on trusting the process where even if right now, if it doesn't make sense, but you will need it at some point in the future. We may not, you just may not realize it yet. So now we're at the end of our interview today. And I want to thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. But I also want to give you the last word. If anyone were to forget about everything we've talked about in this interview today, what is the one thing you want them to remember about Vectus overall? So about Vectus is that uh, AI is booming, uh, regulation is coming, and nobody, everyone know that documentation is very important, especially when it comes to models. Uh, nobody wants to do it. And that's what we focus on. So that's really the main thing uh, I would love people to remember from it. Uh, from more of, a, of, the, of the growth discussion, the thing I, I'd love to, to, for people to remember is uh, to, to focus on empathy, empathy to, to your audience. I think this is the really a key thing into uh, not only uh, having good results, but also having a good time uh, and feeling, uh, feeling like you're doing uh, something really good on your day to day. Amazing. Thanks so much. And I agree with you, you know, regulation is coming. This is a time to really buckle down on it and to focus on it. So Remy, thank you so much again. It was our pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you. For all of our listeners out there, check us out next week on Pathmark Presents.